Hi and welcome to my channel. Today I'm coming to you barefaced and that's because I am going to do a first impression on some new Makeup Forever makeup products. Last year Makeup Forever came out with their Matte Velvet Skin Full Coverage Foundation. I did a review on this on my channel as well so I'll make sure to leave it down below. But this year they've come out with a powder version of that foundation and it's actually called the Matte Velvet Skin Blurring Powder Foundation. So as you can see, you get the powder on one side and then it also comes with an applicator which is dual sided. And Makeup Forever has also come out with a new range of concealers. So I've been using their Ultra HD Invisible Cover Concealer for the last few years. So I believe they have discontinued this as I can't find it on the website anymore, but they have come out with this new range of concealers which is their Ultra HD Light Capturing Self-Setting Concealer. I will be putting these two new products to the test today and we will see how these products work out. I'm just going to read through a bit more information about each of these products starting off with the Matte Velvet Skin Blurring Powder Foundation. So this powder foundation is available in 30 shades and I opted for the shade Y225. Here are all of the shades of this powder foundation and my shade that I picked out is the one right at the top here. This foundation goes for 48 Canadian dollars or 38 American dollars and this foundation is said to be good for all skin types. I'm personally combination skin so I get a bit more oily in my t-zone. What's also great is that this compact comes with a really big mirror. I'm trying not to blind you here, um, but as you can see it's very big so it's great to keep in your purse for touch-ups throughout the day. And as I mentioned the applicator is dual sided. The sponge side which is this black side over here is said to provide more full coverage so you can really pack the foundation on and then you get this velvet side right here which is supposed to give you more sheer coverage. And I'm going to be trying both of these sides out today so you can see how they perform. And lastly, it also provides a matte finish. And then moving on to the concealer, it's supposed to be self-setting, so you can probably use this without having to use a powder on top and it should be lasting all day. This one ranges for 35 Canadian dollars or 28 American dollars. The shade selection is a bit smaller, so it comes in 22 shades. I once again went for one of the lighter shades. I went with Nude Ivory, which is the shade number 12 over here. As you can see, it has a doe foot applicator. It's supposed to provide a natural finish. It's also said to provide medium coverage, but it's supposed to be buildable. So if you want full coverage, it should be pretty easy to achieve. And lastly, it's said to provide 12 hour wear. So we'll see if it creases or if it actually ends up looking smooth. Today's actually perfect because my skin is actually not looking its best. I have some scarring on my cheeks. I have a breakout on my neck. So we'll see how these products are able to cover those issues as well as my redness. As you can see, the skin on my face is always darker than on my neck. And that's because I was told I have just naturally redness and pigmentation to my face so that always comes through so we'll see if this can all even out and if I can end up matching my foundation a bit closer to my neck color. Whenever I use a powder foundation I always make sure to start off by applying my liquid products underneath and today the only liquid product I'll be using on my face is concealer so that's what I'm going to be starting off with. Now the Ultra HD, the old concealer that's discontinued that I would use is more yellow based as you can see as opposed to this one which I would say has more of a pink beigey undertone. So I'm curious to see how this will look on my skin. So I'm just going to be applying it under my eyes. As you can see I have dark circles so we'll see how that covers them up. And to blend out the concealer, I'm going to be using a brush by Real Techniques, and this is their pointed foundation brush. So right away, I can see that it's really brightening. 
and it's fairly easy to blend out. It doesn't feel super thick, so it smooths out really easily and it's very lightweight. I don't feel like I have any product down there. Wow, I really am liking this product so far. It's super easy to work with. And since it is self-setting, I'm assuming you have to work with it quite quickly. So that's why I'm just starting off with some underneath my eyes and then I'll be applying some more on the rest of my skin where needed. So right away you can see how much brighter my under eye area is looking. So now I'll be applying some to the rest of my face. I have a scratch here, beauty mark there, beauty mark there. Around my nose I have um, veins that are showing so that's another problem area. I think typically a lot of people deal with more redness around their nose <laughs> so I know I'm not alone. It's a common issue. And lastly, you want to cover up that breakout down on my neck here. So that's what I do. I like to spot conceal. And sometimes the concealer I use is not a good shade to match the rest of my face, like the old Ultra HD. It was just a bit too yellow to apply to the rest of my face, but this one I believe will be a pretty good match. Once again, I can see that it's really good at covering. Like, insanely good. It's super impressive. I can barely see the veins here. When it comes to my beauty marks, it's rare that it completely covers them, but it's still better than nothing. I don't really worry about it being blended out super perfectly. Like right now, it looks <laughs> kind of patchy, but that's okay because with the powder foundation, it will even everything out. But like, I don't know if you can see, like here I have naturally a lot of redness and you can just see how well it covers that up. So here is the breakout I've been dealing with. And once again, it's not completely covered but it definitely even out the pigmentation that comes along with it. So that is concealing completed. Now moving on to the powder foundation. So I usually will go with a more medium coverage, um, but I want to see how this velvet side, meaning the sheer coverage side, is going to work. I think I'm just going to start off by using this side. And if I just really find that it's not building enough, I'll just switch to my sponge side. I saw that you just really barely need to touch it because it transfers on really well. So I think I'll start off with just this small amount. So let's see. How this goes. Wow. It really does a good job at evening out the skin. I would say the coverage is medium right off the bat using this side which is supposed to provide sheer coverage. So that's actually really impressive. I'm going to finish off this side using that same white side. Even on my nose, it does a really good job. Just in comparison to the side. And then I'm just going to bring it down my neck a bit. So for the other side, as I said, I'm switching to this side. This is how it comes on. And despite it being 
a sponge. I feel like it's not like soaking in any of the product. So that's good. I find like it's not wasting any product. It pretty much stays on the surface of the sponge. What I will say is I find the sponge side slightly drags on the skin a bit more. The other side feels smoother. So this is the side I just completed using the sponge side of the applicator. And to be honest, I didn't notice much of a difference in terms of coverage. I would say maybe on this side there's slightly more coverage. On this side my pores are peeking through a bit more. So I think I prefer using the white side, but we'll see how well this lasts throughout the day. Usually with liquid foundation, I would still use a powder, but as this is a powder foundation, I am skipping that step. And I didn't really focus a lot of product underneath my eyes just so we can see how that concealer performs. So I'm just going to be applying some blush, bronzer, highlighter, do my eyes and apply some lip product I have a few errands to run, so I'm going to be out and about, so we'll see how these products will last, and I'll be checking in with you in a few hours. I forgot to show you guys what time it is, so it's currently 8.48 a.m., and I just completed my makeup off camera, as you can see, so I went with something really natural for today, and as promised, I'll be back in a few hours. I'm back for my midday check-in. It is currently 1.54 p.m., so I've had this makeup on for just over five hours and honestly, I don't see any difference. It's still looking as fresh as when I first put it on. I don't notice it looking greasy in my T-zone. I did put a bit of highlight on these areas here, so that's why it looks slightly more shiny. and. It may look kind of shiny on my forehead, but that's because I have my fan light on. But in person, it doesn't look greasy or oily. It just has a slight luminescence to it, but that's because of the lighting I have on. And the sky just became kind of overcast, so it's really reflecting right now. So yeah, so far so good. I'm still really happy with the way this foundation and concealer is looking. Regarding the concealer, I don't see any creasing on my under eye. It didn't budge and my eyes tend to get sometimes watery depending on the day, but I'm not seeing that right now. There is no like area that it's smeared or anything like that. I will be back probably towards the end of the day when I'm ready to remove my makeup. So. I should have this makeup on for maybe another 4-5 or five hours, we'll see how it goes. Here's another close-up, so you can see. It's still looking really fresh, really good. I have zero complaints. Hey there, so I'm back for the final check-in of the day. It is currently 7.54pm, so I've had this makeup on for the last 10 hours and overall my conclusion is that I am super happy with how this product lasts throughout the day. So I don't know if you can see, I obviously got a bit more shiny as the hours have passed but it's nothing too crazy or even that noticeable. I would feel very confident going out without having to touch up my makeup right now. As I expected, I did get more oily in my T-zone. So you can see here in my forehead, um, around my nose, on my nose, a bit on my chin. I would honestly be shocked if this didn't happen because it's pretty typical. But overall, I can highly recommend these two products right here. I think they make a perfect duo slash combo when it comes to your base makeup and I forgot to mention earlier but this shade matching is actually really awesome as you can see my face matches my neck really nicely so overall I'm super impressed and um, I'll do one final close up so you can see the concealer hasn't really creased underneath my eyes I don't look 
cakey or it didn't really like fade in any areas of my face. The coverage is still there. There isn't really any redness peeking through. I haven't touched up anything throughout the day. So I am super, super happy with the results. And I think this is going to become my new go-to combo for my base makeup. I'm actually in love. If you end up trying any of these products, do let me know. I would love to read your results if they performed as well as they did on me. And I'll make sure to leave my blog post below where you can also see like before and after shots and I'll be testing it out for the next few days so you can really hear my final thoughts on these new Makeup Forever products on there as well. So that concludes my first impression on these new Makeup Forever products. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed and please subscribe if you haven't already. I would love to have you join my little YouTube family. Let me know if you have any video recommendations that you would like to see from me in the comments below. And you can also find me on social. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest. All links will be down below. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in my next one. Bye!